The New York Knicks have missed out on another free agent signing, and I'm here to break it all down. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dario. Earlier today, Bleacher Report broke the news that the 76ers are signing Gershon Yabuselli to a one-year, $2.1 million minimum deal per Woj. Yabuselli was a key player for France during their Olympic run. Now, the main thing that I want to highlight is that the Philadelphia 76ers... The 76ers, which are going to be a rival to the New York Knicks this season, have signed Yabuselli. I don't know if you guys watched the Olympic Games, but I saw every Olympic game that the USA played. And of course, that includes the gold medal game, which is definitely one of the best basketball games I've ever seen, alongside the game against Serbia, which was in the semifinals. But... The Philadelphia 76ers, now their big man lineup. I'm not even talking about their lineup and their roster. I'm talking about their big man lineup. They have a starting center of Joel Embiid. Andre Drummond more than likely is going to back him up. And Yabuselli is probably going to be the third big man off the bench. Or he could be the power forward coming off the bench. And the Knicks have a big man lineup of Mitchell Robinson, who is an injury-prone player. And I think you could jot him down for a minimum of about, what, 25 games that he's going to miss a season. And backing up Mitchell Robinson, we have Precious Chachua. So once again, free agency, as far as big men, the Knicks have totally, totally struck out. Now, some of you guys watching this are probably making fun of me, are probably saying that, yo, you're making a way too big deal out of this. It's Yabuselli. He actually played in the NBA before for the Boston Celtics, and he didn't do that good. But... I'm just looking at it from the totality of what the Philadelphia 76ers have been able to do this offseason. I said in one of my previous videos that the Philadelphia 76ers, I think you can make an argument that they've had the best offseason uh, for any NBA team. The signing of Paul George, the re-signing of Kelly Oubre, the re-signing of Kyle Lowry, the re-signing of Tyrese Maxey, the signing of Andre Drummond, and now the signing of Yabuselli. Now, if I'm going to take a step back, if the, all of the signings that the 76ers made this offseason, the only way it's going to work is if they get a healthy Embiid. And the knock on Embiid is that he can never stay healthy um, up until the playoff time comes around. And we haven't seen it yet. Every time there's always something that he's dealing with, whether if it's a, a, something in his foot, his knee, his back. I don't know, his face, something in his hand. There's always something with Joel Embiid. So all of these signings are great, but if Joel Embiid isn't healthy come around playoff time, then what is it really going to mean? Paul George, I do have my reservations about him. I have my questions about him, if he could really be, if he could really step up to the plate. Right now, he's in a number two spot, but if Joel Embiid is not healthy, can he propel himself to be that number one guy? I mean, Paul George has said that he's comfortable being a number two, and he's, after playing with Kawhi Leonard for all those seasons with the, in the Clippers, he said that he grew accustomed to being a number two. So all of that to say, the Philadelphia 76ers, in my opinion, I think they've had one of the better off seasons. And the New York Knicks, we had that great signing of Mikael Bridges. But besides Mikael Bridges, what have we done? We lost Isaiah Harnstein. Yeah, we were able to re-sign Jalen Brunson. And he took that huge pay cut, which is going to make him go down in the history books as far as New York athletes. But besides Michaela Bridges, what have we done to add to the roster? Now, the re-signing of Precious Achua has looked like it's going to be some sort of trade deadline bait. Hopefully, we're going to be able to include him in some sort of trade uh, deadline deal, maybe acquiring Walker Kessler, maybe acquiring Clint Capella. The one thing I can say about the Knicks is that big man rotation, that is a huge gaping hole. And now with the Philadelphia 76ers signing Yabuselli, the Boston Celtics big man lineup, you got Al Horford, who's Mr. Old and Reliable. You got Chris Porzingis, who's not reliable, but whenever he's healthy, he's like a Joel Embiid. Whenever Whenever he's healthy, that's what all NBA media analysts say, all the NBA talking heads, if he's healthy, whenever he's healthy. Like, you can make the argument that the Boston Celtics, they actually won a championship without their uh, main big man, which is not nothing to sneeze at. And I'm just saying, after watching the Olympics and watching Yabuselli, I only saw Yabuselli play in a gold medal game, but from what I've heard through the commentary from Dwayne Wade, and I believe it was Noah Eagle, 
the Abu Sali's play in the Olympics was just, it was kind of a legendary run. And in the Olympics, I got his numbers here. He averaged around 23.8, 24 minutes, averaged 14 points, 66.7% from the field, 28.6% from three-point land, and 81.5% from uh, free throws. Now, Yabu Sali's first stint in the NBA, like I said a little bit earlier, was with the Boston Celtics. Now, these numbers are not going to jump out at you because they're pretty bad. 2.3 points, 1.4 rebounds, uh, 0.4 assists, and the 74 games he played for the Celtics. Um, those two seasons that he actually played for the Celtics, I believe the 2017-2018 season, and then it was the 2018-2019 season. So those were his only two seasons that he played in the NBA. And again, those numbers aren't really great. In his rookie year, he averaged around 2.5, 2.4 points, 1.6 rebounds, 0.5 assists. Uh, you take a look at the field goal numbers, 0.8 on 1.8 attempts, which equates to 42.6%. 3.4 on one three-point attempt, which equates to 32.4%. His sophomore season, he averaged around the same thing, 2.3 points, 1.3 rebounds, 0.4 assists, uh, field goal percentage, 0.9 on two field goal attempts, 45.5%. Three-pointers was nothing really, to, nothing really to brag about. So again, you guys might be looking at the numbers, you guys might be calling me crazy and making a big deal out of, out of nothing. But from what I saw from Yabu Sally, I mean, Yabu Sally's play alone in the gold medal game, like, take a look at the way he impacted the game. Look at that dunk he had on LeBron James. Look at the way that he went at Joel Embiid. Just look at the way he went at the U.S. starting five and the rest of the roster. Like, it looked like he was somebody that he knew he belonged on the floor. And one of the things that the commentators, Dwayne Wade and Noah Eagle, were talking about, they were talking about how, I specifically remember that I believe he was at the free throw line and they were talking about how what his wishes were. He was a free agent at the time. He just finished playing he just finished playing his contract out with Real Madrid and I believe they said something along the lines of like he's not gonna be chasing NBA teams. If NBA teams come calling, then he'll definitely pick up the phone, he'll have the conversation. And long behold, the Philadelphia 76ers, after the Olympic play, they call him and he signs to the Philadelphia 76ers. I just really, really, really liked what I saw from Yabuselli and one of the knocks on him during his first and only two seasons with the Boston Celtics was his weight problem. Um, if you watch the gold medal game or if you just watch Yabu Sully throughout the whole Olympic play, like he looks like he's in really good shape. And another thing that he added to his game is his shot making. Time and time again throughout that gold medal game, Yabu Sully was able to step behind the three point line and shoot that uh, three pointer. He was able to hit a little mid range shot. He could put the ball on the floor. Yabu Sully took on the challenge of guarding LeBron James. And we all know LeBron James being this physical specimen that whenever he wants to get his points, all he can do is just back down his defender and just get an easy two buckets. But Yabu Sully, when LeBron was backing Yabu Sully down, Yabu Sully was big enough, he was strong enough, he was physical enough to withhold his ground. And at the same time, Yabu Sully is being able to put the ball on the floor and actually dunk on LeBron James. Like, I'm just saying, man, just the pieces that the Philadelphia 76ers have, the pieces that they picked up, they re-signed in this offseason, it all depends on Joel Embiid's health. Joel Embiid, if he is able to stay fully healthy from game one of the NBA season all the way up until however they far, however far they get into the playoffs, if it's the NBA Finals, then we'll finally be able to see Joel Embiid reach his potential. But up until this point, we haven't seen it, and we don't know if we're going to see it. So all of these signings, re-signings, they could all mean nothing. But being a New York Knicks fan, it's just something that I'm keeping my eye on. It's the Philadelphia 76ers, of course, they're going to be a rival to the New York Knicks this upcoming season. And in my opinion, it's between the Philadelphia 76ers and the New York Knicks as far as being a true contender going up against Boston and coming out of the East this season. In my previous video that I posted, I talked about the Bleacher Report's um, Eastern Conference standings predictions. Uh, they had Boston Celtics at number one. They had the Philadelphia 76ers at number two. They had the Milwaukee Bucks at number three. They had the Cleveland Cavaliers at number four. And they had the New York Knicks at number five. In my opinion, I don't think that's how it's going to um, end up. I think think the first four is going to end up Boston being number one, Indiana actually being number two, New York number three, and Philly at four. But man, I can't harp on this enough. The big man rotation that the Knicks have right now, I'm just not trusting. I'm just not trusting. And and with this signing of Yabu Sally, like he was there for the taking. And maybe the Knicks had conversations with him, but I haven't seen anything on the internet. I haven't seen any articles, any reports from Ian Bagley. Nobody. Nobody said anything about the Knicks talking to Yabu Sally, entertaining a conversation. And the 76ers just swooped them up. And the thing is, like, 
it's it's an Eastern Conference team within our division. It's an Eastern Conference team that's going to be a rival to us that he went to, which completely irks me. If he went to some team in the Western Conference, I would have been cool. But with this pickup, re-signing Kelly Oubre, the pickup of Paul George, Kyle Lowry, re-signing a Tyrese Maxey, like I said earlier, all of these things that the Philadelphia 76ers have done in this offseason is definitely nothing to sneeze at. We definitely got to take them seriously. And maybe we'll see, man. We'll see if the Philadelphia 76ers are finally going to be able to put it together this season. But for the Knicks, the one thing I do not want to see, I do not want to see Julius Randle having to pick up some big man minutes. Now, more than likely for opening night against Boston, he'll probably end up being the four, the power forward. But if I see Julius Randle playing some minutes at the five, I'm going to lose my head. Julius Randle, he is 100% not injury prone. Absolutely not. I don't want to call him an injury prone player. But... Julius Randle being at the five, going up against those big bodies, night in, night out, Jokic, Embiid, Anthony Davis, Victor Wembanyama, like all these players, they're just bigger than Julius Randle, and Randle can't take all that punishment. He's already had some injuries, shoulder injuries, ankle injuries, like we need everybody healthy, as healthy as possible, because this this season is Eastern Conference Finals or bust. I'm going to say it again. This season is at least Eastern Conference Finals or bust. We can't make the we can't make the move for Mikael Bridges and have a lineup of Brunson, Randall, Mikael, OG, and not expect to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then we have players coming off the bench, veteran leaders, NBA veterans, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart. We have the pieces, man. The only, again, the big man, if we somehow during the trade deadline, if we're able to make a really, really nice pickup of a Walker Kessler or a Clint Capella, somebody to back up Mitchell Robinson, then that, will, I think, will definitely put us over the edge. But we got to wait and see. we got to wait and see what the Knicks do. Um, trade deadline time, maybe early in the season, maybe they just see what's on the floor and they don't like what they see between Mitchell Robinson and Precious Achua and Jericho Sims. We'll see what happens, man. But again, this pickup of Gershon Yabuselli is definitely something not to sneeze at. We got to take them into consideration. And Yabuselli, he can make a huge impact with the 76ers. So we'll see what happens, man. But guys, that's it for today's video. I want to say thank you so much for checking it out. Let me know what you guys think about the 76ers picking up Yabuselli. Is this a huge miss for the New York Knicks or do you think it's not that much of a big deal? But until next time, you know the drill, you know the vibes. Ty Gibson for president, wherever you are. Jalen Brunson for all the MVPs. The deuce is loose for co-MVP. Mikhail Bridges for defensive player of the year. And I'm out.